Welcome to the ClearSight channel, where we talk about eye conditions and better eye health. This is your host, Frank, an eye health expert and educator. Today, we're talking about the different surgical options for correcting refractive errors when your child's myopia stabilizes and the highest prescription power they may be able to correct. As a parent of a child with myopia, you know the struggle to keep it under control and prevent the correction power from progressing can be overwhelming. For children, the two general corrective options are eyeglasses and contact lenses. But once your child becomes an adult and when their myopia stabilizes, there are more treatments available to help them see clearly. In this podcast, we will dive into the surgical options for correcting refractive errors in adulthood, including keratorefractive and intraocular refractive surgery. We will also discuss the factors to keep in mind. By understanding the available options, you can help them set up the optimal course of action for your child in years to come. So let's start with keratorefractive surgery. What is it exactly? Keratorefractive surgery is a procedure in which the shape of the cornea is modified with the intent of changing the refractive error of the eye. It is a popular and effective way to correct myopia for adults. The reshaping of the cornea leads to the correction of light rays that enter the eye and improves vision. When it comes to keratorefractive surgery, there are several types available. PRK was the first type approved by the FDA in 1995. This procedure removes the outer layer of the cornea to reshape the underlying tissue through a technique called surface ablation. This procedure is less invasive than LASIK and LASIK, but the recovery process is generally longer. On the other hand, LASIK, which was approved by the FDA in 1999, is the most well-known and widely used form of keratorefractive surgery. It involves creating a flap in the cornea with a laser and reshaping the underlying tissue, then replacing the flap to cover the treated area. Most patients experience significant improvement in vision within 24 hours after the procedure. LASIK, similar to LASIK, reshapes the outer layer of the cornea, but without creating a flap. While the recovery process may take longer, the procedure is less invasive. SMILE, a newer form of keratorefractive surgery approved by the FDA in 2016 for low to moderate myopia, removes a small disc of tissue from the cornea to reshape it. This procedure is less invasive than LASIK and is suitable for patients with a thin cornea. Depending on the laser system used, the highest refractive errors that keratorefractive surgery can correct for myopia range from minus 6 to minus 14 diopters and minus 3 to minus 6 diopters for astigmatism. Common risks or complications include over or under correction, dry eye, visual correction regression, glare, halos, light sensitivity, corneal scarring, and ectasia. It is important to note that these procedures may result in a thin layer of tissue in the back of the cornea, or medically referred to as residual stroma. This can increase the risk of ectasia, which is a progressive thinning and bulging of the cornea. A suggested safe residual stromal bed thickness for LASIK is 250 microns. And what about intraocular refractive surgery? Intraocular refractive surgery is a viable option for correcting myopia in adulthood. This type of surgery involves altering the power of the eye's lens to correct vision issues. There are two main forms of intraocular refractive surgery, FECIC intraocular lens implantation, or PILI, and refractive lens exchange. Refractive lens exchange is a procedure that removes the natural lens of the eye and replaces it with an artificial lens called an intraocular lens. However, since the FDA has not approved the use of these lenses for solely correcting refractive errors, and you will need to have cataracts at the same time to use them, I will focus our discussion on the FACIC intraocular lenses, PILI. FACIC intraocular lens implantation involves implanting an IOL directly into the eye without removing the natural lens. This procedure works to correct refractive errors, providing clear vision without the need for glasses or contact lenses. PILI is a highly effective procedure for correcting myopia, but they come with their own risks and benefits, 
Depending on the lens, the highest refractive errors that these lenses can correct for myopia range from minus 15 to minus 20 diopters and minus 2.50 diopters for astigmatism. After the surgery, some patients may also experience visual fluctuations, blurred or halos around lights. Other possible risks include infections, corneal edema, iritis, cataract, retinal detachment, and glaucoma. As with any treatment, the best option will depend on individual needs and circumstances, as each type of surgery has its own advantages and disadvantages. You will need to consult with your eye doctor to see which is the most appropriate for you. So to recap, as the parent of a child with myopia, it is important to understand that preventing its progression now can help reduce the likelihood of vision-threatening complications in the future. After your child's myopia stabilizes when they grow up, keratorefractive and intraocular refractive surgery may be considered to help them regain 20-20 vision. And a great bonus is that by then, they will be old enough to pay for it themselves. And that brings us to the end of today's podcast. Thank all of you for joining me and listening to the podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Until next time.